Yeah. So hi everybody, my name is uh, Ted Langston. I'm the founder and CEO of Kick. Kick is the world's largest chat network. Uh, we're a top 30 free app on iPhone and a top 10 free app on Android. Uh, we're especially popular with US teenagers. In fact, 40% of US teenagers are active on Kick. Uh, it's just huge. And the reason use it they is they use it to connect and chat privately with all their friends no matter where they meet them. So they meet friends at school, they chat with them on Kick. They're hanging out on Instagram, they chat with them on Kick. In fact, if a lot of you use Instagram, you'll probably see in the comments picture and then comment, 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 and then like, hey, what's your Kick? Here's my Kick, Kick me. Uh, so Kick is this like, in the older crowd, not very well known, in teenager crowd, just like dominant. Um, but the thing we've been working on for the last three years is, is how should the web work in mobile? Uh, on one side, how can we all build these amazing experiences but then on the other side, how can we get them in the hands of millions of users? And so this is what we want to show you today. But before we do that, I want to go back and give you some context. I want to tell you the story of Kick. And this story starts a long time ago, uh, before Android, before even iPhone, back in 2007. It's like seven years ago, started here, Blackberry. So in May 2007, me and 2,000 other students started at BlackBerry as interns. And as a University of Waterloo student, BlackBerry was the coolest place to work. They had all these hard problems, all these smart people, but the real reason we all wanted to work there is they gave every employee, including interns, Blackberries with full data plants. So there, it was awesome. It, it, it was just like this time when like data plans were so expensive that it was only Wall Street bankers that could afford them. And me and all my kid friends got to live in this world where we all had smartphones with unlimited data. And the thing we, we used most was BlackBerry Messenger. Now, we had all come from this world where we had ICQ and MSN Messenger and you know AIM. But somehow BlackBerry Messenger was different. For the first time, you had this community that never went offline. You didn't turn off your phone and leave it at home. You didn't turn off your phone and put it in your laptop bag. It was always on, always connected. So that if you sent somebody a message, unless they were sleeping, they'd always get back to you right away. And we used it like crazy. Now, I spent the next two years working at BlackBerry, eventually ending up in a consumer product management role. To where the point my boss actually said to me, Ted, you really get this mobile stuff. You should go start a company. So that's what I did. In January 2009, I moved into Velocity. So Velocity is this like cool place at the University of Waterloo where 60 students go live there for four months each term. So you have 60 kids on one side who are living in this building, but then on the other side, it's also an incubator, so they all want to start a company. And that's where I met Chris Best, who became my co-founder and CTO, who you'll meet later. So we're like, OK, we want to do something in mobile. We want to do something on BlackBerry. What can we do? What don't we like about BlackBerry? We're like, well, you know, the email's good. Messaging's great. But music, music fucking sucks on BlackBerry. We're going to fix music. It's not fair that our friends who have iPhone, they just carry one device. But me and all my friends who have Blackberries, we have to carry a BlackBerry and an iPod. Let's fix music. So that's where we started. We, we built this music service that you'd have everything on your BlackBerry, and then you'd be able to wirelessly stream it to any screen. But then the killer feature is we went and worked with all the labels to get the licensing so you could share music for free with your friends in mobile over BlackBerry Messenger. So you could be listening to a song, send it to your friend over BBM, they'd get it, they'd click it, and then boom, it would open up right and kick music, you'd be able to listen to the song. So all this is going well, and it's now sort of late 2009, and we're really excited, and you know, we're still working with all the labels. But then this thing called the iPhone happens. And Apple opens its App Store. And we're like, oh shit, the App Store. If we're going to have this social music experience, it's got to be on BlackBerry and iPhone. And we're like, wait, for that to work, then BlackBerry Messenger needs to be on BlackBerry and iPhone. So we went to RIM, BlackBerry, and we said, hey, guys, 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 you need to take BlackBerry Messenger cross-platform. Not only so that we can use it for our social music experience, because we're going to go cross-platform as well, but if you don't, you're just going to get left behind. There's all these messengers that are coming out on iPhone that have announced they're going to be on BlackBerry soon, too. But they refused. 
They refused. They're like, no, 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 we can't take BlackBerry Messenger across platform. Then people would just buy iPhones. And we're like, well, that may be true, but if that happens, then you're going to lose your Messenger and your phone. There's going to be all these competitors. And we spent the next four months begging them to take BlackBerry Messenger across platform. But they just refused. And so finally, we said, enough is enough. If you're not going to take BlackBerry Messenger across platform, then we are simply going to have to build our own chat product ourselves. And they said, go ahead. So that's what we did. So now we had two apps. On one side, we had Kick Music, this amazing music experience that let you stream music to any screen. On the other side, we had Kick Messenger that let you chat with all your friends. Now, you could have Kick, just Kick Music or just Kick Messenger. But if you had both, they would work together. So you're in the Messenger. You can send somebody a song. They click it. Boom, it opens Kick Music. You listen to the song. And you're like, oh, check out this song. Bam, back into the chat. You're chatting with your friends. It was this amazing experience. It's now 2010, and we're still working with the labels. You know, we thought we'd get the licensing done in a month. And everybody told us it would be a year, and that ended up being true. Um, and so we're, we're waiting on the licensing, waiting on the licensing, and we're getting close. But the market's moving fast, and all these other messengers are coming out, and all these music apps are coming out. So, so we said, we have to get into the market with something. Let's just, let's just launch the chat app. We'll get it out there. We'll get a couple of users. We'll get some feedback. And then once we get the licensing a couple months later, we'll launch that, and it will just explode. That will be our killer feature. So in October 2010, we launched Kick Messenger, thinking nothing of it. But a funny thing happened. It just exploded. We went zero to a million users in 15 days. We went one million users to two million users in five days. The entire world was talking about Kick. My mom called me. She says, Ted, 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 do you know that Whoopi Goldberg just talked about Kick on The View? I was like, I don't know what The View is, but I've heard Whoopi Goldberg, and that's cool. We were working around the clock to try to scale these servers. I officially went from CEO to like head of getting McDonald's at 6 AM. It was, we, we even chartered a private jet to fly servers into our data center because we wouldn't make it from Friday to Monday. The entire world was talking about K. It happened so fast that we actually missed getting a picture when we crossed a million. We're like, oh no, we're going to cross a million. We need to get a counter set up. We're like, we don't have time to get a counter set up. So we made sure not to miss crossing two million. This is when we crossed two million. But then it all came crashing down. So the press was saying, Kick is just BlackBerry Messenger, but for all phones. And BlackBerry wasn't happy. So even though they had told us a couple of months before, go ahead, build your own chat, now they had changed their mind. First, they took us out of the App Store, so new users couldn't find our BlackBerry app. Then they turned off push notifications, so any BlackBerry user wouldn't get messages for up to an hour delay. Then they took away access to their tools, so we couldn't fix it. And then they sued us for patent infringement. This was the front page of the paper the next day. At the time, a third of our users were on iPhone, a third of them were on Android, and a third of them were on BlackBerry. So everybody was either on BlackBerry or talking to somebody on BlackBerry. And now all those users were no longer getting messages. And so we went from adding hundreds of thousands of new users a day to adding zero, basically overnight. It was the most gut-wrenching experience of my life. Now, fortunately, a couple days before, we had signed a term sheet for an $8 million Series A investment from RE, Union Square Ventures, and Spark Capital. That was like the luckiest thing ever. <laughs> because now, at least, we had lost all of our users, but we had the time and money to figure it out. But we had this dilemma. We were now the cross-platform messenger that was no longer a cross-platform. So we needed to find a way to differentiate it so that people would want to get Kick again. But on the other side, mobile is all about simplicity. We had to find a way to differentiate but still keep it simple. And so we thought long and hard about what that could be. How can we differentiate but keep it simple? And we went back to this. Here, if you wanted just chat, you could have just chat. But then if you wanted to add music into it, you could do that seamlessly and simply as well. What if we could do this not just for music, 
but for any type of app. What if we could do this for games? So that my friend says, hey, I want to play a game, opens up Kick, I send it to Chris, he gets it, deep links him right into the game where he can play with me. What if we could do this for shopping apps? What if we could do this for video apps? What if we could let any developer plug into Kick for the same amazing viral distribution, discovery, and engagement? So that's what we built. Three years ago, we were the first messenger to launch an open API that allowed any third party to plug into Kick for discovery, distribution, and engagement. And it, it worked really well. Developers loved it. And just even at the time, we had a much, much smaller user base because we just lost all our BlackBerry users. We were still able to push partner apps into the top two or 300 free apps on iTunes and on Android. But there were problems with this. Three problems. The first problem was that distribution was so painful. When it was just kick, just kick music and just kick messenger, I got two apps and it just worked. It was fine. But now that it was all these different third party apps, distribution became really painful. We'd have a new partner come on and he, you know, he had a video app and he'd send it to me and say, hey Ted, check out this video. And I'd get it in kick, I'd click it and I'd say, you don't have this app yet. Do you want to get it? I'd say, yeah, of course I want to get it. Take me to the app store, click download, put in my password, wait for it to download, go to the home screen, open the app icon, register up for an account, and then play the game. It's like, okay, that was a little painful, but that's okay. Then the second time it happened, a video app. It says, you know, check out this video. Click it. You don't have this app yet. Do you want to get it? Yes, I want to get it. Go to the app store, click download, put in my password, wait for it to download, go to the home screen, find the app icon, register an account, watch the video. Then the third time it would happen, this new shopping app. Hey, check out this item in this shopping app. You don't have it yet. Do you want to get it? Yes. Go to the app store, click on and on and on. So the first problem was that distribution, it just became how, so obvious how painful distribution in mobile was. The second problem is that most apps weren't cross-platform. When it was just Kick Music and Kick Messenger, any platform we put music on, we also put Messenger on. But now it was any third party, most of them were only developing for iOS. So that if I'm on Android, which half of our users were, a friend would send me a game, say, hey, Ted, let's play this game together. I'd click it, and it's like, you don't have this app yet. Do you want to get it? I'm like, yes. It's like, oh, just kidding. You can't get it. They don't make this for your platform. So the second problem was most of these apps weren't cross-platform. And finally, third, even if they did make the app for my platform, and even if I did go through all the pain of installing it, it got really confusing. When it was just Kick Messenger, Kick Music, I'd get a song, I'd click it, I'd listen to the song, and then we'd give a nice little button back. Back, hey, thanks for the song. But now that it was any third party, as soon as we sent you over to that third party app, they're like, we're not letting him get back, because we have him now, and he's staying with us. So it was very confusing for users. We ran all these user tests, and they go over to the game, and they're like, OK, where am I? How do I get back now? Distribution was a pain. Apps weren't cross-platform. And integration was really confusing. How could we solve these three problems? And we, we sat back, and we thought about it. And we had this light bulb moment. And we're like, wait a second. These aren't problems on the desktop. On the desktop, somebody emails me a link to a YouTube video. I click it, and I'm there. It doesn't matter if I'm on Mac or PC. And it's all in the browser, so I know exactly where I am. Wait a second. If we could build a browser right into Kik, if we could make the web work in mobile, then all these problems would disappear. That's what we've been working on for the last three years. How could we make the web work in mobile? How could we take a browser and build it right into Kik? This app used by 40% of US teenagers on a monthly basis. How can we add the APIs, all the APIs and tools that web apps are missing so that you could build these great experiences? And then how can we build all these discovery options to get them in front of millions of users? That's what we're going to show you now. So right now, I'm going to ask Chris Best, co-founder and CTO, to come up and show you this. Chris and I first met over five years ago back at Velocity. And Chris is this like, extremely rare type of guy who on one side is this amazing engineer, can like, out-engineer almost any engineer, but on the other side still understands how to do 
look at these amazing, simple products. So Chris, warm welcome of applause for Chris. Come on up. He's going to show us. I'll keep the mic. Can you use that one? All right, can you guys? Can you guys hear me? So what's so beautiful about the web? And can we first of all all agree that it's probably not JavaScript? <laughs> and what I mean by that is it's not really the tools and technologies at all, right? Um, you know, the tools and technologies are important, and they're top of mind at a developer conference. And of course, we're right to care about the things that help us, the tools that help us build great stuff. But what really makes the web the web is the distribution model. Right? That's what we learned while working on the Kick platform, is it's the free, worldwide, you know, open distribution model that makes the web great. I can take some content or an application or a story and put it up online and instantly, and I can be anybody, I can put it up online and instantly everybody in the world has access to that. And what's more, everybody in the world can share it really easily, right? That's what we're talking about with links. I can just send you a link to any content and bang, you have it. That's, that to me is the promise of web. That's the dream. So what would it take for us to live that dream in mobile? You know, if we need to be able to have that instant sharing, that powerful web distribution in order to build a great sharing experience, what would it take to for us to actually be able to distribute our mobile apps that way? You know, first you would need a mobile browser that people actually used for applications and was popular. Second, you need to make sure that you had all of the APIs you need to build a first-rate experience in mobile. And finally, you need to, something to help solve that initial discovery problem, right? You need a way to get those mobile apps into users' hands. So this is why we put a browser into Kik, right into the messenger, to try and solve these problems. So let's see how that works. Free of my hands here. So we had a long-running joke uh, in the kick office that it would be really funny to make a, uh, a broadcast sharing app, the premise of which is you're only allowed to type in all capitals. Um, <laughs> the idea being, of course, that when you read it in your internal monologue, it sounds like you're yelling. So everybody's like, let's go for coffee, guys, or who broke the fucking build again? Like, this kind of thing. Uh, anyway, that's what I decided to do for the demo app for today. Uh, this is Yeller. This is my mobile first web app. Um, I won't go through all of the minute details of it. It's up on my GitHub, but it's you know 70 lines of HTML here. I've got whatever, 80 lines of JavaScript, 100 lines of CSS, the most important being turning lots of stuff uppercase. Um, for the back end, I use Firebase, which if you guys haven't checked out, I actually highly recommend you do. It's an awesome service for like real-time data synchronization. Uh, I'm also using AppJS, which is an open source library that we put out that aims to make making a app feeling website really easy. And I'll sort of show you how that looks now. Somewhere here. Uh, and you guys can actually play along here. So I've deployed this website to uh, yeller.herokuapp.com. Can you guys pull out your phones and go to it so that you can play along with this little experiment? Um, I'll say that again because I didn't bother to register a domain for it. It's yeller, come on, typing. All right, I'm going to met, nope, not even that. Yeller.herokuapp.com, you guys can go to it. My iPhone simulator has died. Hmm? 
I am using my mouse. All right, we're going to go to a real iPhone. Possibly. Actually, no. Well, first of all, we're going to kill this and see if that fixes it. Where's my Xcode at? Nope. Getting out a real iPhone. That's the plan. Sorry about that. I brought up the simulator because I thought it would be more reliable than trying to do this, but. All right, let's look at it in Safari. Yeller.herokuapp.com. And this is it. So I can set my name, and I can, <laughs> I can see there's already some. <laughs> Holy shit, you guys. All right, man, that really took a while to set up. But, you know, I can type my messages like JavaScript, just so that nobody murders me afterwards. Um, <laughs> and this is it. Um, as you can probably tell, I didn't consult with any of my designers before writing this app, if the color scheme didn't tip you off. Uh, but the cool thing about AppJS is it actually looks kind of decent anyway. You know, the buttons look and feel like buttons. I get native-like page transitions. Uh, if I were on Android, I would get Android native-like page transitions. All to say that I can make a web app that sort of feels good to somebody who's been accustomed to native apps. Cool, so that's what it looks like in Safari. Uh, now I want to go and you know, add some of that other stuff I was talking about. I want to add seamless sharing, that kind of stuff. Let's see what it looks like in the Kik browser. So this is Kik Messenger. It's a really simple chat app. You know, when we added the browser to it, we wanted to leave everything the same, so we didn't change any of the structure. It's all the same way it was. The only thing that got added is, on the left there, you can see there's those three dots, that little handle. When I pull that over, this is where the browser lives in Kick Messenger. And as you would expect, I can go to my app the exact same way. I'll go to the UL bar, I'll type in yeller.herokuapp.com. I probably should have registered a domain for this. Uh, and bang, there it is. Right? Same app, same sort of browser Chrome, same kind of browser features. Uh, it's right there for free. And I can type a message. When I'm done, I can go back to conversations and I get that simple kick messenger experience back. So that's how the browser works in Kik. Uh, now I want to do more with it. You know, I want to get control over my browser Chrome. I want to add that seamless sharing. I want to, you know, use some of those APIs. That's where the kick specific APIs come in. And I do that by dropping in one JavaScript file. So in my sort, oh, I gotta switch back to the computer. Can you guys see this? Everybody still following along? All right, I'm gonna drop in this one JavaScript file, kick.js. This lets me feature detect and use kick specific APIs. So I actually already added a share button that's right here. And in my JavaScript, I can write code along the lines of if the kick script exists, and I just uncommented it, and the kick.send API exists, then when I press this button, do a kick send action. And if not, you know, rip it out of the DOM. I'm not in a browser that understands kick stuff. Um, so I can still be totally compatible with you know, every, br every browser as, a, as I would expect to be. Uh, this is a really simple example of the Kik API. There's actually a ton of stuff there. Um, everything from really deep Kik integrations, you know, like identity, authentication, social graph, push notifications, that kind of stuff. 
um, all the way to just sort of normal browser stuff that sort of plug those holes that you're missing to get that last mile of polish. You know, things like orientation, locking, chromelessness, that kind of stuff. Uh, but for now, for Yeller, all I want to do is just let people share it on Kick. And so I've dropped in this Kick script. So let's see what that looks like now. And I think I do have to nip back to the phone here. Sorry about this. And to avoid having to do a deploy live on stage, I actually published this to a second URL. Um, <laughs> I did foresee technical problems. So at yeller-kick.heroic, you guys don't have to follow along here. Yeller-kick.herokuapp.com. And this is the exact same app. The only difference is that I uncommented that one kick script. So now when I go to it, it works exactly the same way. But first of all, notice I've been able to get rid, I've been able to get down to the absolute minimum of browser Chrome, right? You can see that the, the, the web app goes all the way right up to the top of the screen. And the only piece of browser Chrome on the whole page is this, what we think is the exact minimum is this handle. So I can always get out and I can always see where I am, but it's not sort of permanently present on the screen distracting me. And if I put my name again, and I go in, now I can see that kick share button. Oh god, it's live. <laughs> so, kick share button. Let's see how that works. Can you guys see this? Sleepy? No. So I can click that share button. I've decided that Yeller's the greatest app ever I need to share with all my friends. I just hit the share button and I'll send it to Ted and say, hey, check it out. and then click the X and go straight back to my Yeller experience. Um, and Ted will just get that message. <laughs> yes, of course he will. Um, when he gets the message, let's imagine what his experience is here. So if I were to, to delete this, and I'm Ted now, and I'm getting that message for the first time, I've never even heard of Yeller, he would just go to the conversation, <laughs> click on the Yeller link, and it would just open, right? As I would expect, this is just a link. That's how I want sharing to work with my apps. You know, that's how I want distribution to work. Check out this app I made. <laughs> you know, that is harnessing the real power of web distribution. Let's go back quickly to the screen here. So now that I've got an app that looks and works pretty well, I mean, obviously, this is the best app ever because it's yelling, uh, and I've added sharing, I have all of the ingredients that I need for my app to, to grow organically and become successful. But before it can do that in the real world, I need a way to seed some initial discovery. Right? I need a way for users who hear about my app to be able to find it. I need a way to sort of get it out into people's hands so that if it's going to take, it's going to catch that viral je ne sais quoi. It has its chance. It has its initial shot. Um, that's where Top Sites comes in. So when I, did, when I put together my various you know, meta tags here, um, I added a rel canonical tag. And as you know, this just says sort of this is the official version of my app for anybody who's looking, or my page for anybody who's looking, anybody who cares about it. And what, what we do is we actually scrape the, scrape the internet looking for mobile first web experiences that people are sharing on Kick, right? So when I send that Yeller, when I send Yeller and I've got this correct meta tag set up saying, yeah, this is the canonical version of my, of my app, it will actually get picked up by the Kick scraper and we can show it to users to, to, to spark that discovery. Let's see what that looks like. So now when I go into Kick, and I'm, even if I'm just using Kick Messenger and I'm looking for more things that I can do and share to get involved, in the bottom right here, there's this top sites list. This is something that we maintain with that scrape content. And if I look at the new section, 
There it is. There's Yeller right at the top. And what that means is kick users all around the world now who are looking for mobile web experiences to engage with will be able to find that. And if enough of them like it, and if enough of them start using and sharing it, it might actually migrate over into the popular section where that distribution will get amplified even more. So I can go to it right from here. <laughs> and <laughs> it looks like people might actually be finding it already, which is really cool, unless this is all you guys, in which case, thank you. I'm just going to put send this home. So that's how I can live the dream. I got to make a mobile first web app using all of the tools and technologies and stacks that I already love. And it works for free in the Kik browser. Then if I want to upgrade that experience, I drop in Kik.js and I get, you know, I can detect and use the Kik APIs to make it even better. And then finally, Kik can help me harness that power of, you know, the, that open distribution that I love about the web to actually get my app into more people's hands. So that's how Kik works with the web. That's it for me, thanks. Uh, I'll give you back to Ted. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. All right, that was awesome. Um, so we're about to go into a question and answer because uh, we're really here to, to work with you guys. But before I do that, I want to tell you one last story. So when we figured this out, we, we had this light bulb moment three years ago, back in 2011, we're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, maybe this is the way the web could work in mobile. The real web, the one-click, cross-platform, open distribution web. And so we started working, and we hit all these problems, like, oh, it's hard to build a mobile web app. Oh, how do we build a browser into Kik? Problem after problem after problem. To the point where it took us a year just to get to the first alpha. But I remember when we first had it, it was so exciting. We would show people, like, look, 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 look. You know, we'd do that demo. Chris would send me an app, and, and it'd be there in the conversation. I'd be like, watch this. Click. It opens. I have the app. And people were like, whoa. I'm like, imagine I did that demo on the desktop, and I emailed you a link, and you just click it, and it opened. You'd be like, yeah, that's the way the web works. But in mobile, people like, you just click it, and then the app opens? That's incredible. And so we're all excited, and we're like, OK, OK. We got to take this to Sand Hill Road. The guys there got to see this. We got to go to all the big guys at the desktop web era. So we went to Mark Andreessen, the guy that created Netscape. We went to John Lilly, the guy that ran Firefox. And we went to Mike Abbott, the guy that created WebOS at Palm. And we said, guys, 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 look. It's the web in mobile. And you know what they said? They said, Ted, haven't you heard? Didn't you hear what Mark Zuckerberg said? The web's dead, man. The web's dead. The web is dead. And we're all bummed out, and you know, we fly home to Waterloo. We're like, oh, the web's dead? Uh, oh, man. Like, how did we miss this? And, and, and we sort of we, we got back, and we said, wait a second. Of course the web is dead. The great thing about the web is not building in JavaScript. In fact, to build a like, first-rate, amazing mobile web app, it's actually harder to do in web than it is to do in native. Now, the thing that makes web great is distribution. And so when the only distribution available to mobile web developers is wrap it in native and put it in the app store, then you lose all the things that make the web special. Of course the web is dead. So we spent the next two years really focusing on discovery, really focusing on distribution. How can we bring that one click open cross-platform distribution to the web, to mobile. To where today, web apps on Kik see a mil over a million new installs a day. One million new installs every day on Kik. So this is why we're here. We spent so much time trying to figure out how distribution works in mobile. But distribution means nothing unless there's also great content to distribute. And so that's where we want to partner with all of you. We want to listen. We want to learn how to make this better. Because we believe that if we can work together, not only will the web not be dead anymore, but that we might just be able to also turn it into the future. 
So I'm going to invite Chris to come back on up, and I'm going to give this mic back to you guys. And we'd like to just hear your questions. Like, how can we make this good? How can we build more distribution? How can we make this easier to build for? So that, you know, maybe we, together we can unwrap the web and really make this work. Okay, I'm going to put this over here. Who's got a question? All right. So I'm an iOS developer, and uh, Pain Point is uh, test flight, like distributing apps before you release them. And someone told me this morning that test flight was going to shut down. I know that Bursley got acquired by Apple. Um, any kind of integration to make distributing like beta apps would be valuable to me, personally. So the question, if I understand it, is, you know doing betas and doing sort of early release on iOS is really painful. Yeah. Test flight might be shutting down. You know, how does that work in this world? And you know, this is one of this again, this comes back to what, what is so great about the web is the distribution model. This is just Kick is just a browser here, right? So when you this is this demo I gave is not sort of like, you know, some hypothetical thing. I can make my I can make my application and put it up on the web. And anybody with a browser, of which Kick is now one, can go to it. So if you want to run a beta, you just, you just do exactly that. You just send people the link. Right. It, the, the issue is that it's kind of what uh, Ted was alluding to earlier with the pain process of just signing up for something, signing up for an app. Um, because I'm not doing a web app right now, uh, or in this test case. Yeah. So like this is where we started with the Kick platform that we launched in July 2011. We're like, distribution sucks in native. How can we fix that? It's like, well, we're not Apple and we're not Google, so we can't. And so, like, really, the, like we feel that the only solution to that problem was to get people to start building in web. Yeah, I hear that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not your fault. And it's not just betas either. Like, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of great sort of development stuff that comes from that, right? Like running A/B tests. Right, like doing continuous deployment. Like there's a whole galaxy of like best practice shit that we've learned that becomes possible once you sort of make that leap. Cool, thank you. Great demo. Good question. This is probably not a good question. I'll just prefix that. So I have a Firefox OS phone, so it only runs uh, web apps. Will it ever run Kick? Do you want to do that one? Because I'm, I'm right in understanding yeah. that Kick is a native app, right? Yeah. So Kick is a native app. Um, you know, we've talked to the Firefox guys. We like, we believe in the mission. We love it. Like everything we've done, even with like the Kick APIs, the social APIs, they're just all open. It's like all client side. None of this. Like you get a token, and we have to like, you know, we can shut you down at any time. So we really believe in that open mission. Um, the problem we have with the Firefox strategy is like. You should get the web, so go buy a new phone and then get the web. Whereas our strategy was you already have the Kick app, just start using the web. So right now we're really focused on iPhone and Android because that's where we feel users are. Um, but maybe one day down the road we'll do Firefox OS as well. Um, all the demos today are showing kind of games inside of Kick. I'm wondering if you have any plans for allowing us to put like kick features inside of games. So if we want to hit other platforms where people aren't living inside your whole kind of sandbox environment, but we want to expose chat and kind of shared identity and stuff like that. Okay, so the question is, you know, you let now all these, like you turn kick, you build in a browser, you can do all these, uh, run all these like web apps inside kick, but can we do the reverse? I have a native app, can we do kick features inside that native app? Or a browser app. It's definitely something like we want one day for Kick to be ubiquitous, but we think the place that starts with a, is a really good user experience. And so we just found like with sharing specifically, like we had all these partner apps, and you know I I, I get this partner app. It has a Kick button. It opens up Kick. I send it to Chris, and there's like this 95% drop off where Chris is like, mm, no, I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna get that app. So that's why we started with web, but definitely over time we want it to be ubiquitous. Payments. Uh, I didn't really see much on your site in terms of how payments would work in this type of setup. Yeah, so definitely like we look at the three. So the question was payments, like I'm a developer, like 
you know, build, that's cool, distribute, that's cool, like money, how do I make money? Like, I, like I, gotta, I gotta eat, I gotta build something big here. Uh, and it's hard to do that without money. Um, so we're definitely thinking about a lot of ways about how we bring monetization to the mobile web. Um, but at the very base, most basic level, this is just a browser. You can build any monetization you want. And we cannot stop you. Just like you know, um, I built PayPal for the for the desktop web, and I let any app plug into it. Here, anybody could build the "quote unquote" PayPal of the mobile web. There's been no but demand before because there's been no distribution. Uh, but we're already starting to see a bunch of people build these sort of monetization services for the mobile web now that there is. Does that make sense? Yeah. And one more question: uh, How tightly integrated can you make a app with Kick? Or like either how much Kik can you bring in app, or how much app can you put into Kik? Sorry, can you repeat that one more time? So I, I guess what I'm asking is, so from what I saw, it's you're in the Kik Messenger, and then you go into this app. If you wanted to augment or enhance the Kik experience of the chat, the the, the core messaging um, experience, how much of that can you um, augment versus like just replace okay so if I'm understanding correctly the question is how can how much can you alter sort of the core kick messaging experience directly through these extension points sure mm -hmm. um, and like so the answer is sort of complex and I would refer you to I guess the API documentation that we have on dev.kick.com uh, but basically the high-level things that we provide are uh, and these are all, of course, optional, but you can do, you can get identity, so you can ask who the user is. You can do authentication, so you can do sort of, you can prove to your back end who the user, that the user is who they say they, they are. You can do social graph stuff, so you can pull, you can ask the user to select c contacts. And from within the converse, and then there's all of the messaging stuff. So from within, you can send, you can send messages and you can open those messages. That's sort of the high level, and there's push notifications. There's a whole big list of stuff, I guess. It's sort of a complex answer. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious if people are emulating the basic messenger app and then adding, like enhancing it from there, or is it really just separate experiences? Some of the more successful stuff right now plays off the fact that it is built into a messenger. Like the stuff that's really succeeding in, in that distribution right now is stuff that, that works in a messaging context. The most popular one I think is a video messaging thing. So there's no video messaging feature in Kick. So somebody's just like, well, screw it. I can write this myself. And they did. And a lot of the other popular apps aren't so much emulating messenger features, but doing things that sort of harmonize with the messenger. So building services around meeting new people, building gaming experience that are sort of social and makes sense in sort of the context of a chat network. Uh, so I think, yeah, definitely like making experiences that work well in this, in, in relation to the messaging world is, is working well for people today. So you're asking what the backend stack is for Kick Messenger? Uh, so we actually use a custom, well, a, we use a Java stack. Uh, we started out with an open source XMPP server called TGaze back in the day. And we've just been sort of like continuously replacing the engine while the bus runs on that. So we have what is essentially a big, messy Java stack. <laughs> uh, I, does, does that answer the question? Cool. I, have you um, uh, done anything in the whole education market, and are there uh, a lot of apps that are integrating with you in education? Do you want to answer that? Um, so the question was, have you done anything with the education market? Um, we, we haven't yet. Um, it is open to platforms, so people can build whatever they want. But there definitely is, we're talking to a lot of people because you know, when it comes to U.S. teenagers, we're like one of the biggest services in the world, like 40% of U.S. teenagers. Um, so we've definitely like started working on a lot of these projects, but none of them are alive yet. So it's it's definitely, you know, we want to power these teenagers' lives over time through this this mobile browser. Cool. So I think we'll cut it off there. Uh, Chris and I will stick around for a bit, and we have a booth downstairs. Really appreciate the time and. Uh, yeah, dev.kick.com, check it out and put a web app out there. Thank you. <laughs>